Hey guys, what's up? James here from Embark, and today I wanted to talk to you about the intuitive money rule that will help you become financially stable, and yes, you can still buy nice things. So I'm gonna jump straight into this, guys, because it's relatively simple and pretty self-explanatory. The 50-30-20 rule simply states that once you've received your paycheck, you allocate 50% of it to needs, 30% of it to wants, and 20% to savings. Now, it's worth noting that in the UK, our paychecks come with tax already deducted, whereas in America, this isn't the case. So when we're talking about this 50, 30, 20, it is with regards to net income, not gross income. So with the 50, 30, 20 rule, everything that you need to get sorted gets paid for first. This is rent, utilities, food, travel to and from work, things like that. So yeah, you might be spending 80% on your needs if you're living by yourself and you're working minimum wage, and it might only be 20% if you're living with family and you've got a decent wage. I'm just gonna talk with regards to generalities, not in the specific nuances. So 50% on needs, then 30% on your wants. So you allow yourself some wants, some, some desires, you know, food out at restaurants, going out cinema, buying new clothes, trips away, things like that. And the obvious benefit to this is that you actually get to enjoy your day-to-day -day life. If you were spending 50% on needs and then 50% on savings, there's there's no joy in life. You'd literally be, just as soon as you pay for your needs, that's it. You'd have no more money to spend on anything you want. You wouldn't be able to get your daily coffee, anything like that. So, you know, you have to have those wants in there just to keep you on track and to enjoy life. And lastly, um, 50, 30, 20, 20% 20 goes on savings or investments. And there's a method with where this 20% goes depending on where you are in your financial journey. So if you're just starting off on your financial journey to independence and you are starting off with debt, first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna pay down your debt, okay? So that 20% savings is gonna be paying down the debt. Then the second thing you wanna do once that debt's paid off, those 20% of savings is gonna go into actually generating a um, six month emergency fund. Some people do six months, some people do 12. I think generally most people do sort of six months and a six months emergency fund will cover all all of your outgoings for six months. So everything that you have to pay out for, for your needs. And this is just in case you lose your job or a big expense comes up, like you have to repair your car or buy a new boiler, something like that. So it's just for those emergencies. So if your outgoings tally up to 1,500 pounds a month, you'd want 9,000 pounds saved to cover you for that six month period. Now, once you've got that sorted, so you've paid down any debt, if you had any, you've got your six month emergency fund now that 20% goes from savings into investments. We're talking stocks, bonds, ETFs, whatever you want. The idea is to put your money to use and take advantage of compounding interest and compounding as a method and mechanic in finance. If you haven't learned about compound interest, then you can right here and let's move on. Now, I know this isn't the, the rule, if you probably Google it online or maybe you look at other videos, it's probably not the rule, but I would argue that investing in yourself probably comes in that 20% as well. There's 20% savings slash investment. That allocation is for furthering your learning through courses, books. I would argue that that investment could be an investment in yourself as well. Now, I know a lot of this sounds based Basic or may sound basic to some, but understanding these things are really important. These are the fundamentals, the foundations of understanding finance. So get the basics right, everything else falls into place. Not only this, but writing these things out, regardless of how basic it might seem, will probably surprise you. The wants can easily start chipping away at the saving slash investment side of things if you let it get out of control. Gotta keep an eye on it. Now, depending on how frugal you are and your wages, there's another two steps to this. And just for ease, I'm gonna stick to the 50, 30, 20 as a ratio. But the next step would be 50% needs, then 30% savings, and 20% wants. Then the next step would be 50% savings, 30% needs, and 20% wants. As your wage increases or as your business grows, that money should be getting put away into investments. People make the mistake of keeping the numbers the same and just increasing their outgoings to match the increase in wage. In fact, the vast majority of people I know actually do this. They get a, you know, five grand wage increase and they'll instantly start looking for a more expensive flat to rent or a new car to lease. Whereas if you are frugal and live below your means, this is where you can start putting more money into investments 
and where you can really start to build wealth. Now, realistically, the 50, 30, 20, that, they're just arbitrary numbers, but it seems to be a great starting point for people, and that's why it's such a popular rule. And as you progress to actual financial freedom, the numbers are gonna look odd. It's just a rule, it's just a guideline, but the, the, the actual numbers would probably look a bit different. Maybe 67% on savings, 26% on needs, and 7% on wants. You can play around with the ratio as much as you want. It's just for guidance. But if you're unsure on where your paycheck is going each month, it's time to do an audit and start using the rule to get you back on track. Right, that's it guys, the 50, 30, 20 rule. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We have new videos coming out every single week. I've been James from Buck, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.